Right, we're going to Newmarket now. And uh, see if Bob's with us. Hello. Good evening, Bob. How are you, sir? Not too bad. Can you see all right? Oh, yes, we can see you perfectly well. I'm just going to turn you around, ladies and gentlemen. It is our very own Bob Champion from Newmarket. Um, what can I say? Rode Alden ET 40 years ago to win the um, Grand National Fairy Tale Story, sir. And, uh, wow, does it seem like 40 years? No, it doesn't actually. When people say 40 years, good God, it only feels about five years ago. But uh, maybe I was the youngest jockey to ever win a national. You know, I must have been about five, I think. <laughs> Brilliant. And I, sp I suppose, Bob, the memories just. You know, they're all rare, mate. They never go away, do they? It's as it's, it's fresh as a daisy, are they? Yeah, you know, it's a day I'll always remember, but he was a good horse. Um, you know, he had so many training problems, but he kept coming back and kept coming back winning. He only ran about 25 times in his whole career, you know, really? um, over all those years. Um, he spent most most of his life in a box, actually, with plaster and things on. Yeah, that, that is unbelievable. And uh, I'm going to have a chat with Alex later on. Uh, oh, that's good. Because the family... Um, yeah. and, 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 uh, they, they did a terrific job, you know. They basically um, nursed him all the way through it and everything. And got him fit to go back to Josh's to start country. They did all the road work. They did the hard work. No, that was fantastic, yeah, and uh, of course Josh Gifford, he's a miracle worker as well, and uh, what a great team um, that was all, to get all round, really, yourself. And... Oh, good God, yeah, I'm, I had the easy bit, all I had to do sit on it for about nine minutes, uh, ten minutes, I suppose, leaving the panic and everything, I had the easy bit, they did all the hard work. Brilliant. Well, it's lovely to talk about all the needs. Right, charity bets. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, it's lovely to have you on, Tomo. I know you've been a busy man. You've just got back from Dubai again. I love your tan. <laughs> Thank you, Ron. <laughs> Brilliant. I'm, and uh, I'm self-isolating at the moment, so... <laughs> yeah, I bet you are. I bet you are. And uh, Bye -bye. You, you always come on on special occasions. You came on on our Christmas special. Tonight is our 40th show, and we've combined... Well combined it with our with Aldenity winning the Grand National 40 years ago. Now, you grew up with Bob, didn't you? Yeah, I did, yes. Uh, we started uh, riding together and uh, we grew up together and uh, he's an amazing guy. I went to Gisborough Grammar School. He went to Gisborough Secondary Modern, which probably says it all. He <laughs> left school at, at 15, uh, went down south and he had no qualifications at all. And uh, he helped his uh, uncle, who used to work on his farm. Then he started riding at point of points and stuff, and then incredibly made it to win the greatest steeplechase in the world. Incredible. Brilliant. Uh, uh, um, we watched an interview you'd done 10 years ago with with Bob, and you you told the story about when you were two little boys, and, it's uh, true. It's true. and they asked, true. asked you what you wanted to do, yeah. Yeah, it's true, sir. I've read car races. Yeah. And, uh, we were standing by John Rickman, the guy who's saying, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, where are you with this hat on? And uh, he said to me, what do you want to be when you grow up? I said, I want to be a race course TV presenter like you. Uh, and he said to Bob, what do you want to do when you grow up? He said, I want to ride the winner of Grand National. Amazing. It's incredible. It's a true story. I've tried to find the tape, uh, but obviously it's, you know, it's gone. But that is a true story. That is quite a few years ago. I think we were seven and nine at the time. Of course, he's much older than me. So, uh, seven and nine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. And um, you, you was um, with Bob when he was recuperating from cancer. And you, you saw him at his lowest and um, how tough that was for him. How tough was it for you to see him like it? It was very tough. Uh, when he was in hospital, you know, obviously he rang me from America, said I got cancer and all that. He came back and, you know, and all that. There, there, there's too many stories, but the, the, the one story I remember, you played the clip as you were training for when he went down to see the kids, you know, and said, are you going to survive or are you going to die? Yeah. You know, and said, I'm going to get well. And I remember seeing him in hospital and he, he couldn't walk, you know, I drunk and I'd walk down. And I, I used to drag him out of his bed, literally, with his stand, with the stuff pumping into him. 
And I said, you know, we've got to keep the leg muscles going just in case, you know, when you come back as a jockey, you know, thinking, you know, he's not going to come out of hospital. But, and he could walk to, I think, four beds we did, and then he had to turn around and walk back. He couldn't move, and he was being sick every 30 seconds. And I remember once coming out of hospital, and I thought, that's the last time I'm going to see my mate. And I had a big cry in the car. And it was it was very, very moving. It was just just incredible. And just think, not only is he still alive now, but he came back to win the Grand National. The horse that wanted to put down, the jockey has to be put down himself, you know. You know. And you know, if you went to a Hollywood producer and said, I've got this idea for a film about this guy who's got cancer in a horse, you know, oh uh, don't be silly, it would never happen. It happens. Yeah. And and what uh, it, it is incredible. We, we don't joke about it, we still talk about it now, occasionally, all these years on. But vividly, I can still remember him with no hair, lying there. You know, it was it was not a pretty sight. And thanks to him, uh, he has led the way. And it it's gives a, a people who suffer from cancer a great incentive. You can beat it, be positive, go for it. You know, Absolutely. Get, what, get, get, get back, that's what I always say. Yeah, me and the good lady, we work in the hospice, mate. We, we see it day in and day out. But Bob is an absolutely inspiration and people are still, you know, looking up to him and, and thinking, wow, you know, which is, is amazing. And I'm privileged to call him a friend now through lockdown and he comes on our show every single week now. He's part of our team and we are delighted to have him. Well, you are so good, you and the Mrs. Karen, I mean that. And you've helped raise a lot of money for the Bob Champion Cancer Trust. So, in a sense, that will then help. And he's told you all about the, the place at Norwich, you know, the research centre. And it, it, it's so good. And what I like about it, he's just a normal bloke. Yeah. He's not on, on the Grand National. You know, we joke about it now, you know. Fancy winning the Grand National, you know, s silly things like that. And when we watch it again... He always says the fences were much bigger in my day, you know, like old jockeys do. Yeah. And it's it's, it's true, it's they true. were, they were absolutely yeah. massive. And I'll never forget what he said, that Josh Griffith, you know he was leading him around at the start. Yeah. He says, if you win this race, I'll stop smoking. And he actually did. Did he? He did. Oh, wow. Josh, uh, uh, just a, a great guy, Josh Griffith, you know. Yeah. And, oh, uh, yeah. So, yeah, great memories. Yeah, brilliant, and I'm, I'm delighted because I was associated with Josh. He, he, he helped yeah. me out with charity work right back in them days. He's, he's an amazing man, and I was just delighted to be involved with the kids. But as soon as, this, soon as this lockdown's um, over with, mate, I just want to get in a car and come to Newmarket and meet you guys and, and uh, spend some time with you. Um, but yeah. Me, We've got to go. Yeah, be <laughs> Oh, we've had a busy night, busy night. Um, yeah, because Tomo don't stop talking, we blame him, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Alex, thank you so much for joining us. As you know, we're we're doing this night, not just because it's our 40th night, but it's the 40th anniversary of the great Alden E.T. And um, he was part of your family. And uh, wow, how, how did you, how did Alden E.T. come about? How did he come into the family? Um, he, um... Oh, well, it was Dad bought him from Josh Gifford. Um, Dad um, came from a, he was came from America and he had a really good friend years ago called Tommy Stack. I oh, think no, Tommy uh, Tommy Smith, who won the Grand National on oh God, I think I won. Uh, anyway, he won the Grand National. Come on, man. Um, <laughs> and. Um, yeah, so he always had a dream of winning the Grand National. Anyway, um, I think um, Josh said he'd got a nice horse, um, and it ran at As he ran at Ascot um, in Althea's colours, and um, and it won, and he won, um, and um, he, he said, "Oh, this horse has won." And Dad said, "I'll yeah, I'll come and see him." He said, "You are, you have to come quickly because someone else wants him." So um, so he went the next day and he said, yeah, I'll have him. So, yeah, so that, so that was just it, really. Um, right. So he came from uh, Tommy's um, uh, ba um, Barrow, David, ba da uh, David Barron up in Yorkshire. Right. He bred it um, and named him after his four children. Um, and, right. um, yeah, so, yeah, so he was by a horse called Derek H. out of a mare called Renardo. Right. who was a, 
Um, and he was an HIS stallion, so a hunter improvement um, so um, stallion. So, yeah, not a, not a typical sort of racehorse really? breed. And you, you yeah. looked after all the needs. He spent a lot of time with the horse yourself? Yeah, I, well, I was just young then. So um, when he won the national, I was 14. And he, um, yeah, I was at school. Um, but during all his problems and everything, he became a real family um, favourite. And yeah, when I was... Um, um, yeah, when I was at home from school, I used to spend all the time, all my time up at the stables anyway. But um, yeah, I used to spend a lot of time with him, and he was such a gentle horse, you know, that I was allowed to spend time with him and look after him and that when he was injured and stuff. Yeah, he was an amazing patient, wasn't he? Because wasn't he in plaster for six months and couldn't come out of the box? And, and... No, well, because he won, he broke his um, first injury he had. Um, he fractured his fetlock in the Hennessy yeah. at the first fence, and um, he still came third in that race. Um, and um, yeah, so he fractured his fetlock, and then he injured, he broke down um, the next season on his front leg. Um, and then the second time he broke down, that was when the vets said um, that perhaps he should be put to sleep. Um, and mum said, absolutely not, we'll get him back. Um, and obviously it was a big, because Bob was in having treatment for his cancer then, and it was a real, it was just a dream that we all had. Um, mm -hmm. And also, you know, to, to, to help Bob through his recovery. Um, oh, we froze in a bit. He was in his stable for six months. Um, wow. Yeah, so a really and, good patient. Oh, let's bring you on to the magic day then in April. How... I saw a smile come on your face straight away then, and well, what a day that, that must have been. Um, you had a lovely sunny day, and wow, where was you? Um, I was, we all went up, well, actually, mum and dad went up the, on the Thursday beforehand, because they had a horse running in the, uh, um, and really sadly, he again was another favourite of ours, he was called Stone Park, and he had a, a nasty accident and they were like, shall we run out and eat each other? And they were like, no, yes, we're definitely running him. And it was just magical. But I went up on the fr on the Friday um, with my brothers. Um, so that was a long road trip with them and the car, my <laughs> three brothers. Yeah. And um, yeah, we stayed and, I, and it was just like, it was almost like a dream fairy story all the way through it was like everything was meant to sort of happen it was just it was amazing and bob was there and um joe and obviously josh and out here and we walked the course in the morning and saw um meaty and bob on the racetrack have their um you know they do their little warm-up in the morning and um yeah and i remember actually i think yeah, we were having breakfast. We came back and then we had some breakfast in the hotel. And Bob came down and he said, I'm so nervous. He said he just tried to brush his teeth with his aftershave. So Rob <laughs> he put his aftershave on his toothpaste, on his, on his toothbrush. On his oh, brilliant. Um, but yeah, no, so we went and it was, um, again, well, I know, I remember I had to wear a whole, horrible, my mum bought me a jacket that I didn't want to wear. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Yeah, well. But, um, but, you know, as the race unfolded, it was just like, it was just, yeah, it was like the film, really. It was just, it was, yeah, it was unreal. And then at the end, when he won, and we were on the stands, up, way, way up top. And um, we had, so we had to get down from the top of the stands. <laughs> and everyone, you know, and they're really old stands. and probably not very health and safety <laughs> nowadays. But I remember mum saying, push, kick, shove, and everyone, we've won the Grand National, we've won the Grand National, and we all got lost, and um, I, I, mum held on to Nietzsche's tail um, to get him to get her into the winner's enclosure. And um, I was kind of lost somewhere, and some policeman found me and and um and said to, and I said oh, I'm, I'm I that's that's our horse that's our horse and he has got me amazing story yeah. fantastic yeah. I feel absolutely privileged having you on um Alex because 
I was associated with Josh, I knew Josh well. Um, I actually knew Peter Double as well, who led Organizia. Oh, yeah. And, um, well, I'm very friendly with his ex-wife, Carol, actually. And, um, yeah, no, I know Carol, she comes round with us to do the x-rays for, for the horses and that, yes, the Sussex Equine Hospital. So. Oh, yeah, lovely, lovely girl. And, um, yeah, so I've been very lucky, and Bob is a member of our team here, he comes up with us every Friday night, so we're very grateful. Okay. You, you do a lot of charity work for uh, the Bob Champion Cancer Trust, don't you? Yeah, I do a lot. I think, I think. I've nearly, I think I've raised probably over 100 over the years, like yeah. even when I was little I used to do it, nearly £100,000 um, and still doing it. I did the Mongol Derby, which yeah. is a thousand kilometre horse race, yeah. and then obviously during lockdown it's a little harder to do stuff, but I've been organising an online um, horse show, uh, yeah. a virtual horse show, so um, that keeps me busy. <laughs> Brilliant, and you've got a category there.